All right, hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Leader Gaming and welcome to a tutorial for Derail Valley on the DM3 locomotive. I thought I'd start this series off with uh, something a little bit more interesting. The DE2 has been in the game forever. And so I wanted to start with something a little bit more interesting. We might get to the DE2 eventually, but I wanted to start fresh, start with the new stuff, the good stuff. We're going to be doing a, a series of these tutorials, so if you're interested, uh, hit that bell and all that stuff so that you can uh, get notified because this isn't the only one we're going to be doing. We're going to be going through eventually covering everything. I think we're going to do it once a week. Um, but we'll be eventually covering all of the locomotives. But we're starting with the DM3. This engine is the DM3. Uh, it is based on the British Rail Class 03, um, which is a shunter made by British Rail uh, for light duties, such as mostly shunting, um, but it did do other, uh, some other light work, but it's a pretty cool engine, and it is a diesel mechanical, which we'll get into that in a moment. Also of note is this thing, which weighs uh, 52,000 kilograms. It is 8.5 meters, I suppose, in length, I would assume. Uh, so keeping those things in mind for whenever you're doing your, like, figuring out whether or not something can haul it, it's 52,000 kilograms. The license costs 30,000 monies, dollars. Um, and to my knowledge, I don't believe that there's any requirements, can't think of it off the top of my head, uh, for, uh, prerequisites. Some of the locomotives have prerequisites. Uh, that you have to buy a certain license before you can use it, but I don't believe this is one of them. Like I said, this locomotive is a diesel locomotive, but it is directly powering a mechanical drive, which drives the wheels, which is why you have this here crank um, and this these side rods. So your diesel motor is directly powering this crank like it would like a drive shaft on a car. Uh, and the crank, that spins the crank, which spins the rod, uh, moves the rod, which spins the wheels. And with that comes some interesting gameplay, as because of that, it has to have a transmission like a regular car would. Um, and so that creates some interesting gameplay mechanics, which we'll get into momentarily. Um, but first, let's go ahead and I wanted to actually take a look at this thing. I've seen a couple people kind of do these tutorials, but none of them actually, um, show the thing off all that well. And so I wanted to, like, take a look at the design aspects of the locomotive as well, briefly, and, and then get into the tutorial. If you want to just see the tutorial, there's a timestamp, uh, in the description below. So, feel free to go and skip ahead if you want. But, uh, let's look at this thing a little bit. It's really beat up and rusty. I love that. I love that about this thing. It's really beat up and rusty, uh, and it looks like crap. It looks like it's been through a lot. And that's exactly what it should look like, and it's amazing, and I love this thing. Uh, of course, it's got the buffers and all your usual, um, like, I don't know, cup coupling apparatus. Your headlights and such, um, your grill, your, your steps, which you can hop up onto the, onto the platform here, I guess and handrails, a fuel hatch. Does this, is, I've never, I've never manually serviced anything in the new update. Does this actually get, like, used? I don't know. There's no equipment on the outside of this thing, uh, in doing, in starting it up. Um, I kind of feel like it would have been cool, because with the DE6, you have to, like, open a panel on the side and, like, turn it on that way. I think it would have been kind of cool if this had something similar, maybe, but, um, it does not. If this had like a, a, a extended startup process, but that it does not, unfortunately. Um, and you got the back, the cab section. It looks really cool. It's super industrial. I love this little thing. It's super industrial and it, it looks super grimy and super like beat up and everything. It, it looks like it was used in like a yard and kind of tossed around. Uh, it looks really, really good. It's got two doors on the cab so you can enter into the cab. Uh, you can't actually, it looks like if you like run up, you can't actually jump. There's a step or whatever, so you can actually jump and get in it that way. Or of course you can just teleport. 
but you've got you've got your two doors on the sides opening windows on both sides there and um, windshield wipers and everything you got your cab light which we'll get into in just a moment um, your brake wheel I'll leave that on for now the cab it's so rusty and nasty and all beat up in here and everything but yeah, this 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 cab just looks absolutely beat up and rusty. You better make sure you have your shots before you get into this thing, cause ugh. <laughs> it is uh it is rusty. Um, make sure you've had all your te Tetris Tetris no tetanus shots. Tetris is not the same thing. <laughs> um, so to start this up, you got your control panel here, and the first thing you want to do, you want to flip your electric switch. Which actually, once you do that, we could actually go ahead and um, toggle the cab light on. The electrics will work as soon as that switch is on. Turn the dash light on as well. So these, these are your controls for the cab light. So cab light and then uh, the lights for your uh, for your gauges. So if you don't like ha having a cab light, you can still ha see the gauges better. We'll turn the cab light on just for the sake of ease. Um, and then you take this so that's the electrics button and then your starter but you notice nothing happened this primes the starter I guess and then you actually have to go to this button here once you flip up and now you have the engine is turned on and you can see some exhaust coming out the top etc um, and so that's how you start it and you'll see your um, pressure is, is building because the, um, in your, in your brake stuff, because the compressor's now on and able to run. You've got some tax on your tachometer, RPMs, and so it is now on. So the next thing we'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and explain the lights next, because the lights are a bit confusing. So if you have your lights flipped, lights type, uh, down, that's going to be your 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 main like lights um if you just turn the first one on you just get these kind of running lights where they're just kind of on but they don't actually cast any light if you do just the bottom one you got low beams as you can see um and then if you turn both of them on you get your high beams, your long, long distance lights. And so it's the same on the back, but if you, um, switch the light type, well, I just turned everything off so nothing happens, but if you switch the light type, you turn the, this one on, you get uh, a running light, that light at the top, the red light has, has turned on. Um, if you just do the bottom one, um, it looks like it doesn't have any light. If you turn both of them on, then you can see now it's nice and bright. Uh, we'll leave both of these on and sw switch it back to that. And then the same thing for the reverse. So if I turn that, or no, if I, if, I, if I turn these both on, you can see we have our brights on in the back. Um, and then if I switch it to the up position for that, then you can see it's the red light now. Um, so that's, they, they, they both work the same way, it's just, it's just, um, once for forward, once for reverse. Now, as you can see, it is actually raining just a little bit. Not a whole lot, though. It's not really a downpour, but it is raining a little bit. Uh, and so we can turn on our windshield wipers. So to do that, that control is down here, just below the, um, interior lighting. Uh, and so you have, it's a, it's kind of a three position kind of a switch deal. So you have both of them down is off and then depending on which ones you flip you you get uh, different speeds so if you turn this wipers one on you'll get this very slow intermittent um, windshield wipe and then I believe if you turn that off and turn this one on you can get it to go a bit faster yep and then if you turn both of them on, it's even faster than that. And so that is how to use the wipers. 
So we've, we've talked about most of the controls on this panel. Um, other things to note, you've got the sand. This is how much sand you've got left. You've got the fuel gauge as well, how much fuel you've got left. You've got the oil. Um, this is, I believe... Yeah, this is the actual how much oil you have. And so whenever you're starting to get low on oil, this light will come on. Uh, and then you have the oil temperature. Uh, as you're running, if you are, um... Running real hot, the oil temperature will come up. Uh, and that light will come on. You have your speedometer, of course. You have your tachometer that shows you your RPMs. We'll get- that's extremely important, we'll get to that in just a second. You have your brake pipe, your reservoir. Uh, and your brake pipe. Um, if you want a full video on brakes, maybe leave a like. I might do a full video on brakes. I'll be honest, brakes are a little bit complicated. I kind of have a basic idea of how they work, but an in-depth idea of how they work, I'd have to go and, uh, experiment a little bit myself. That's the thing. You'll notice, though, that this one's blinking. So I can- I can tell you this much. This one is blinking right here. Um, and that is because there's a problem with your brakes. So usually it means, if we come out here, it usually means that one of your angle cocks is turned- or isn't turned like that, or it's been released like that, and it's just dumping into nowhere. Um... Also, as a point of the sound design, you heard that sharp noise just then, and you'll hear an extra rumble. That is actually the compressor, so it's really, really cool that that's actually been modeled in the sound, as it, as the air pressure has to build back up since we just dumped it. Um you have, um, the compressor run, and there it goes, it just kicks back off. Um, but usually if there's a problem with your actual brake line, or there's a brake- a hand brake on one of your cars, that light will be on, but you'll notice we just messed around with it, our- our, um, brakes aren't dumping into the atmosphere or whatever, um, and yet this is still on. Well, again, if your- if a hand brake is on in your consist that's all linked up or whatever, that light's gonna come on. And so we just gotta come over here and turn our boat steering wheel all the way, uh, to the left. And now, you'll see the light is off. And, there are no br more brakes applied. We've got the independent brake. If we tie that, it just ties down the locomotive brake. And if we release it, it releases the locomotive brake. And this is, as you can see, self-lapping. So however far I apply the swizzle stick, um, that's how much brake pressure it's going to do. So this is a self-lapping brake, uh, for the independent. But the, uh, train brake is non-self-lapping. So usually it'll spawn in full release. You want to leave it in running, which if you mouse over it is kind of this position if you use your mouse wheel in order to control things like I do. Um, but if you were to use like this or whatever, it'll kind of, it'll kind of snap into that position as well. So, as I apply the brake, you'll see the red line start to come up. But if I want it to, if I want to put a smaller set of air, so I don't want to brake that much, um, I have to, um, move this back to running. And then to release, you take it back off, and it'll fully release. Once it's all the way back to the red, you put it back to running. So if you wanted to fully apply it, just dump it like this, and basically you just have to hold it to put it into basically emergency, uh, and that'll dump all of your air, and then you come back to release. We'll get into how to actually operate the train, I'm kind of just giving you basic rundown of the controls, but we'll actually operate a train to the harbor, um, that's what this- oops, I've bumped my mic. That's what this job right here is, we're gonna run this job to the harbor just to, um, kind of get a better idea of how to actually handle the- you know, do some train handling and show you guys what's up. But that's how to run your- your train brakes, and then you also have an engine brake, which, um, I'll be honest, you really can't get into, um, while parked like this, and so, um, you kinda have to be moving in order to use it, so we'll- we will check that out later. And then, of course, you have your reverser and your throttle, and your- you- this is your- also your sander. Also, if you want to shut the engine off, that is your fuel cutoff. And as you can see, it, uh, it shuts the engine off. I'll just get it turned back on. This is your sander, it's a little wheel. And actually, the farther you turn the wheel, the more sand applies. So if you just need a little bit of sand, you can just turn it a little bit. If you need a lot of sand, 
you can dump all the sand. Um, and then of course you have the thing I think everyone is most interested in. The horn. And then of course, actually this is probably the real thing everyone is the most interested in, your gearbox. So you've got gearbox A and B. Let's go ahead and let's take a run at this really quick. So the first thing we do, let's throw it in gear. So our brakes are all released and everything. We're going to throw it in gear because this is a diesel mechanical. If you've ever driven an automatic, uh, or uh, if you've ever driven um, in a um, manual transmission vehicle, or honestly any vehicle, whenever you fully release the brakes and whatever, there's a small amount of engine um, engine um, that still is kind of applied to the wheels. And so you'll slowly roll forward, right? So if we engage our reverser, you'll notice that we are in fact slowly moving. You'll see our, our um, speed come up a little bit. And now is where we're going to start to explain the most important gauge you could possibly look at while driving this thing. That's the tachometer. So you never want your RPM to go over 100 if you can. And so what we're going to do is we're still rolling. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply some throttle. And you'll see as we approach 100, because of the gearing of this engine, we actually can't get past 100 on flat level ground um, without shifting at this point. If we were, however, not on flat level ground, like that's as close as we're going to get. We can actually fully apply the um, engine. Oh, uh, we actually are going over. I didn't actually realize that was possible. So we'll go ahead and take it back down. But, um, so maybe be careful, but you know, you'll struggle to get it up over 100. We can't get past this RPM, so what do we do? And we're only at 10, 10 kilometers an hour, what do we do? We're going to shut it off, and we're going to put it in first gear. So, or we're going to put it in second gear. So first gear, let's go ahead and apply some independent brake. So let's explain the gear, the gear shift pattern really quickly. I'll put, put it up on screen. Each gearbox has, um, three positions. So there's three positions for each gear. So this is position one, position two, position three. So first gear is both of them are in position one. Second gear is the f gearbox A is in position one and B is in position two. Third gear, you actually want to reverse that, and I believe you want to push this one first and then this one, but I'll be honest, I'm not sure. I believe that's how you do it to get from second to third, but maybe it is like this. You never want your RPM above 100, and so whenever you are shifting like that, one of them is going to drop your RPM. The other shift, whenever you're having to shift both of them at the same time, is going to um, increase your RPM. So you want to do whichever one drops your RPM first. So, like I said, you've got first gear, second gear. I believe it's like this for third gear. And then you move gearbox B up to second position for fourth gear. Fifth gear gets really interesting. Um, I believe you want to use gearbox A first. You're going to push it, this one into position three. And then gearbox B into position one for, f for fifth gear. Sixth gear is pretty easy. You just push gearbox B up. Seven, you swap the two. And eight, gearbox A, now they're both in, um, now everything is in position three. And so that's how to do that. And you can, if we pull off our brakes, you can jump the gun here and just do this, but it's not going to be a very fast takeoff. But you can't actually do that. I'm going to go ahead and drop us back down, which what I just did was quite dangerous. But I'm going to go ahead and drop us back down, but that's more or less how to run this engine. Okay, and at this point, we're past our switch. Let's back up, grab that train, and... Um, I'll kind of show you guys how to actually, uh, you know, a bit of on the job training. Actually, I just remembered uh, something I forgot to mention. As we're coupling up here, it, it, it reminded me. You'll notice here 
that there is no MU cable. Usually on the diesels, you'll see a blue MU cable. As a matter of fact, uh, I can show you one. I'll, I'll insert, I, actually, I'll probably just insert a picture of it here. As you can see, there's no MU cable on this. That's because, because this is a manual transmission locomotive, um, you have to kind of do it from those gears manually, and there's no way to do it as a, um, th there's no way to, to do that from a, from a different cab, because it's gotta be, it's directly interacting gears with the drive shaft, and so there's no way to do it, um, like the other ones, and so there is no MU cable, so keep that in mind. You can only really want run one of these at a time, unless you get really creative and jump between the two, which I'm sure is possible, but, um... Good luck if you do that. Alright, so I've got the job accepted. I'm unfortunately unable to turn it today. I don't actually know how one would do that. Let's go ahead and hop on in. And... Get us going. We make sure that's set to running. All of our brakes should be off. And let's go ahead and get going. So we're going to engage the reverser, and as you can see, we're just barely starting to crawl, but we've got these four cars of heavy steel behind us. And so we're not going to get a whole lot until we start to accelerate. Let's give us a little bit of gas, though. All right, and as we go along, you can see um, our RPM is coming up. So let's go ahead and shift us into first gear. Now we're going faster. Get us into third. Um, we got a bit of a hill coming up here. So I'm going to keep us in fourth. Lower gears are better for, for uh, torque. And so you want some good torque. Um, on your, uh, whenever you're going uphill. So you don't, you know... This is not a very fast engine. It's not good at going fast, but what it is good at is it is great at at pulling heavy loads um, at slow speeds. All right, so we've hit the grade, um, and now we're going uphill, and you can see I haven't adjusted the gears. We're still in fourth, um, but we're starting to lose some speed. Um, and you'll notice the RPMs are starting to go down. And the oil temp is coming up. So let's actually go ahead and bump us down into third gear. Which is going to help us have a bit more torque. And we'll, we'll full send it on the throttle. Alright, we seem to be our... our uh, we're getting back up to redlining our amps again. So let's go, or amps, RPM. Um, and we're starting to get towards the top of the grade. Um, so let's go ahead and try to get us back into fourth gear. See if we can get going a little bit faster. And that sign right there says that we're on the flat. And I'm so glad I just noticed that. Go ahead and shut off here for a second. Bring up our, our into the next gear. Uh, because I, I was not paying attention there for a moment. And uh, we were well, well into the, ooh. All right, we're fine. Everything's fine. We can start uh, trying to go a bit faster at this point. All right. Going about as fast as we can do in this gear. Okay, so you saw that. It came up really hard, so we want to do this one first and then this one. We want to make sure that whatever we, whatever section that we do 
uh, is gonna, the first one always needs to drop the RPM back down, and then you can, um, do the other one to drop into that. So now we're in seventh gear. Alright, so we're approaching the junction, and about at the junction is where we start to have our downhill start. So we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna cut off, and we're just gonna coast for a second. Uh, we wanna watch the speedometer. And as we get down to about 40, I want to go ahead and, at that point, probably downshift to 7. And we're going to use, for this, I'm going to kind of show you guys how the engine brake works, um, largely. And then we'll probably see about maybe trying to use the uh, air brake system as well. Um, and you'll notice our RPM is actually coming back up uh, because our speed is coming back up. So let's go ahead and kick on some engine brake. We are also, our speed is coming back up. We really want to be doing about 40 through most of this canyon. So let's go ahead and try to put some engine brake in and back off a bit. So I'm just going to kind of use the engine brake. It's going to use, what it does is it's kind of like a Jake brake on a truck. Uh, it uses the engine uh, itself to kind of help slow itself down. Uh, and you'll see at this point we're starting to slow down a little bit farther than that. I'm going to go ahead and cut this a little bit. Um, now that we're going 35. And I like to leave it in a reasonably high gear whenever you're going downhill. Because that way, your RPMs are only going to go down as you slow down. Instead of, and if you speed up a little bit on accident, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if I were to try to match the gear with my speed, um, then it could be problematic as I slow down. Um, I could end up with, uh, an element where as I slow down, I am actually not, um, I end up going too fast, uh, or, or, uh, or too slow, and then, um, or too, if I speed up on accident, I can, you get what I mean? Uh, you get what I mean. I'm sure, I'm sure that I've made my point. There's the harbor. So we're getting close. Uh, but we want to keep an eye, because this is a pretty steep spot right here. So let's throw in some engine brake and just keep an eye on that on that speed and on that um, RPM. Where are we taking this thing, by the way? G5I. Okay. I'll stop on the main in order to figure that out, probably. Be a little bit easier. I don't like to let this thing coast, because it gets a little bit sketchy, if it does. Okay, throw in a lot of engine brake. Let's bring it around the bend, and so what we're going to do to stop... Um, ...is I am just going to apply a bit of this brake here. Take a good set of air, set it back to running. And you can see we didn't grab that much air, just about two and a half bar. But we have managed to come to a stop. All right, now let me go find where we're putting this. G5I. So now that I figured out where we're going, we simply release the air. You'll see the brake pipe go down. Put this back into running. And let's go ahead and set us up uh, for a little bit of final practice on this. So we're in forward. We shouldn't have any brakes. Let's go ahead and get us moving again. Bit of final reminder on the practice here. Uh, we're in first gear. Our tachometers come up. Our RPMs are at 100. We're going to back off. Second gear. Watch those RPMs. Remember to shut the throttle off. 
Put us in third. We'll get up to fourth. And there we go. Ah, yes, it's finally, finally morning. Uh, as we approach in here. So, let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead. We're in the th slot at the track. Um, we're gonna coast for a second, make sure we're all, all of our train is in. And then we are going to, once again, set up some air and coast to a stop. All right, once you're stopped, if you like, you can put the handbrake on, but of course, on your actual jobs, you absolutely need the handbrake on. And let's go turn in our job. This this is this is just an example. I really don't care about much with it. Um Okay, we did that in we still made the time bonus. But yes, yeah, so this is just an example job so that you guys could see um, like train handling and how that all works and so that that was my big my big deal with it Okay, and so the last thing we're going to do before we end it off Is I'm gonna show you guys what happens? When you screw it up Let's give it some throttle. So there's a couple different ways you can screw it up uh, one of them being Shifting wrong, so I've got the throttle Still on we're still drawing power and then if I shift down from fourth gear into third gear, you can see that it there makes a grinding noise, and that's bad. Because the throttle's still on. The other thing... Let's go ahead and grab our throttle. And if I were to shift straight from this one... Let's go straight to eighth gear. We can jump up to that gear. Let's go ahead and get us some speed. See this from the outside now. So there you go. Now that it's daytime, you can see the side rods moving and everything. It is a really cool locomotive. I like this thing a lot. So we're gonna shut off like we're supposed to or whatever. And now, we're going to try to come back down to first gear from eighth gear. And as you can see, it didn't go very well now, did it? Broke all the windows. What happened was we broke our transmission. Um, which is not fun. That's what happens when you get it wrong. So don't get it wrong. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed and found this tutorial useful. Don't you guys worry, there are definitely going to be some more of these tutorials coming. Uh, next, I think we're going to be taking a look at the new 060 that just uh, dropped in the latest patch update. For only $3,000, this locomotive is is um, a really great uh, starter. Like I said, it does so much more than the, um, the DE2. So if you're doing this in your playthrough, I highly recommend picking it up. And as you guys saw, it's kind of complicated to drive. But once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. Um... Un until you make one tiny little mistake and then uh, and then you're very screwed. With that, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and all the things. And like I said, we'll be checking out the 060 next. And hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Later, everybody.